what advice would you give to emerging leaders on how to manage and anticipate friction in their future roles? Ooh, so I do two pieces of advice. One is that friction is often an orphan problem. It's one of those things that we tend to point fingers and say it's everybody else's job but ours. And in the organizations that we see, and this is this notion of accountability, it's that feeling that I own the place and the place owns me. And in organizations where friction is fixed, and I talked about the California Department of Motor Vehicles as an example, there's situations where everybody takes it upon themselves to try to make things, if we're talking about getting rid of bad friction, as easy as possible within their cone of friction. Having a good understanding of the impacts that you intentionally and unintentionally have. And then the second bit of advice that I guess that I would give, and this is how we end the book, we quote Clara Shai, she's the CEO of AI at Salesforce now. And it's this notion that when you're helping people travel through a difficult period where there's frustration, where there's difficulty, where things go wrong that are unexpected, that this notion that organizational life is going to be messy is something in some ways that you need to accept and to help people accept. And life is not going to be beautiful and easy all the time. So you've got to simultaneously do two things. One is to acknowledge people's pain and to let them know that things being messed up is normal. And at the same time, guide them to fix it. And, I, and Clara had this great notion of separation of concerns, which is from computer science. And she said when she does a launch, she's got the the kind of team, the folks whose job it is to keep the schedule going and to operate under the assumption that things are going right. And then she doesn't call them this, but then she's got the clean up on aisle nine team. And those are the folks who are ready for things to go wrong. And I just like that idea of separation of concerns. But as I always say to my students, having taught at Stanford for 40 years, if you can find an organization or a job that's beautiful and perfect, you might read a book about an organization like, well, Creativity Incorporated. I've actually got Ed Catmull's book right here. I love Ed <laughs> Catmull's book for your audience. I, this might be the best business book ever written. And Ed did amazing things at Pixar. That one of the reasons they're struggling now is because Ed has left. But I still remember going to Pixar after that book came out, a book that I helped Ed with the structure and I endorsed and everything. And somebody said to me, oh, that sounds like a great company. I wish I worked there. And that was Pixar. <laughs> it, it's like it's highlight. So I always say to my students that, that if you think the grass is going to be greener sometimes in other places, very often the grass is browner. So you're not going to ever find the perfect organizations. I guess it's a duality that is important for leaders. The best leaders try to guide people to clean up at the mess, but they also help them get through the sort of emotionally difficult part because it's always going to be that way.